everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Early Years Development Show with me, Lucy from Rhythm Time. In today's episode, I sit down with Claire from Play Hooray. Now, if you don't know Claire and you don't follow her on Instagram, you need to. She speaks about all things motherhood, the good and the not so good. It's really worth giving her a follow. She's built a fantastic community on there and she's all about empowering mums. We sit down and we talk about all things social media, mum guilt. We also talk about the pressures that some mums may feel. We then go on to discuss careers and how that looks after having children. It's a fantastic discussion and thank you so much for Claire, to Claire for being on the show. Please like, comment and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. And I've popped Claire's details in the comments below. Enjoy. Ha, ha, ha. Hello Claire, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. How are you today? Oh, thank you for having me, Lucy. It's really lovely to be here. Um, yeah, I'm good. I have all three children in childcare and we're in the school holidays at the moment. We're clinging on, um, but all three children are in childcare. Like the stars have aligned. So I'm just really enjoying getting to chat to you without being interrupted for a biscuit or the usual no one stuff. Your hand. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Because it's always as soon as you pick up the phone, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> always, always. Wait. Well, we are so, so thrilled to have you on the show today. Um, and I am actually a follower of your Instagram channel. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm a little bit starstruck right now as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get really like, oh, do, people don't actually watch it, do they? That, I, get, I get really embarrassed. They do indeed. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> Could we kick things off then, talking a little bit about yourself, your journey, how you came to start Play Hooray? Yeah, so I'm actually an early years teacher by trade. Um, I went to, uh, yeah, I was teaching down at a big school in Bristol in early years. I've always been early years. Um, had my first baby Mason and he's he's nine now, uh, nine going on 19. You know, it's ridiculous. Um but yeah, I was on maternity leave with him and just loved it, adored my baby. But oh my goodness, you know, I just found that once the, the guests had, had left, all my family and friend lived a good three hours away. I, I found the day at home with my baby was lovely and I adored him, but I just found it so long and quite lonely, if I'm honest. And I, I find, I think it's quite hard to admit that sometimes that you're lonely as a mum. And I just, you know, my six month old baby didn't, he didn't sleep. He still doesn't sleep actually. And I felt like I was just running on empty. And um, I sort of had this idea. Well, it, I, I remember the day actually, he was six months old and um, he just started sitting up independently and I like threw a little treasure basket together. I thought, oh, I'll just put some little bits and pieces in a basket for him to explore and sat back feeling really smug with a cup of tea watching my baby play. And it was just a minute to myself. I'm like, oh, you know, when you're just so exhausted running on empty. And it was almost like, I can only describe it as like the clouds had parted, the fog almost lifted. I'd been in that newborn bubble it was so all consuming. And then I did this treasure basket and I was like, oh my goodness, like, I know this stuff. I know <laughs> it was, I, I'd forgotten so much stuff from my previous life as being a teacher. I was, yeah, I was just in survival mode. And so I started, I was like, oh yes, there's so many things I used to do with the kids at school. Of course I can do those with my baby. So I started doing treasure baskets and sensory play and all that and just really enjoy and just really finding myself again more than anything. It sort of, I was like, um, sort of gave me a spark really. And I just remembered my old self and started putting play ideas together with him, started sharing them online just, and um, it sort of grew from there really, just sharing um, on Facebook and Instagram what I was doing at home with my baby. And then parents would message and ask about different things. And I just really enjoyed being in the messages in the inbox you know, people saying, oh, have you got any ideas? You know, my toddler's on the move. And I'd be like, yeah, do this. And I just loved that. And almost like started a built a community, never expected I was building a business. Um, and it's just sort of grown from there. So that was nine, nine years ago now. So all this time later, I now do it as 
my full time job supporting mums, um, pr- primarily mums, um, bonding with their children through play, but also learning to look after themselves as well. So, yeah, who knew that treasure basket where it would end me up, to be honest. Wow, that's incredible. And I think so many of our listeners will be at home because I was just nodding away that kind of newborn bubble that they say bubble. And you're like, is it a bubble or is it a kind of a cloud over my head? Um, And there's so much pressure, isn't there, to enjoy these early stages. Um, So it's amazing that you've kind of found a way to kind of cope even and kind of get back to yourself a little bit. And, you know, that 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 link almost because a lot of new mums, I think, lose themselves a bit. I I hear that quite a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree, Lucy. You know, I've had three babies now, three, I've got three boys. And um, after each one of them, I've been floored by that sort of feeling of feeling lost afterwards. And I think it's that it's, it's so hard to describe because it's such a, it's such an uneasy feeling of just like, so who am I now then? Because you know, that it almost feels like that old self has gone. And like I said, I'd forgotten I knew all that stuff about play. You know, I'm passionate about early years development and I talked for years with young children and supporting them. And I just completely forgot all that bit because I'd been surviving. I was just getting through the day at that point. And it was just like, oh yeah, I remember I used to know this. I used to do that. And it's sort of, I was starting to have the headspace to do it as well. So it's really common for mums to, yeah, just completely feel like they're lost and well, who am I now? I'm in this new chapter and I missed, and it's, you know, it's all, it's also okay to miss the old you. That's a common thing as well. You can quite often find that you miss your old self, you know, getting up and leaving the house without having a bag and everything. I used to leave the house with just my keys. Like how ridiculous is that? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that sort of, you're in a new chapter, aren't you? And you've just got, it's such a learning curve. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, for me, play was a big part of that. I was able to bring my experiences and as a teacher, but also it just, it almost like brought me a purpose um, outside of being a mum. When he was napping, I was setting things up. I was putting play ideas together for him. And it just brought me back that spark. It, it, it gave me something else to think about other than being a mum. And that's okay too. Yeah, absolutely. It is okay. So you're talking about kind of play and this, uh, these early years in a child's life. Is play really important for a child? Is that something that you found really benefits them in that those early years? I think when it comes to play, it can be really, it's a really hard subject actually, because we, I think we almost, we've all been children. And so we just presume that we're going to know how to play with our children. And so often I would have messages from mums saying I'm really embarrassed to admit this but I don't know how to play with my baby or I don't know how to play with or I get bored playing is that okay and it's like yes that's completely normal I had a child who was obsessed with vehicles and vehicle play you know there's only so many times I could be the car park attendant it's just it can get really mundane for us but when you appreciate and start to understand just how powerful play can be for your child's development and learning I think that can be a huge motivator but also yes play is amazing it's essential it's been a huge tool for me as a parent to bond with my baby and to support them and to find myself again starting a business Um, but also it's understanding that you're you're doing things on a daily basis you're doing these little things on a daily basis that are having such a big impact the cuddles the kisses the counting as you're stomping up the stairs the you know making silly noises when you do the zip on the coat the the songs you make up at bath time the walking out and about and pointing out the bus to them you know all those little things our play as well they all still count too it's not necessarily right I'm going to sit down for half an hour and do a treasure basket and then we're going to do a sensory box and then we're going to do a reading it's actually not that it's about I always used to say you know I don't play 24 7 I've got three boys now it's very rare I get to play but it's a tool for me for those days when we are at home or I I am thinking right what we're going to do next how am I going to break up the day I use play as almost a tool to break up my day, something to do with the children. Um, and like I said, I, I just really enjoyed it, my experience as a teacher, but also not forgetting that there are some days I haven't sat down and played with them, but I have 
chatted to them as I was driving them to drop them off at preschool and I've played with them in the back you know there are still lots of other things that you're like nuggets um of learning and development and play that you're doing throughout the day possibly without even realizing that's that's a really nice thought actually because I guess quite a lot of mums you might speak to mums that get a lot of mum guilt perhaps thinking oh my goodness I've not sat down for an hour with my child and I've not played or whatever so those little tips that you can use throughout the day would be really helpful potentially especially for mums that work or as you say mums that have got more than one child are there any kind of tips that you you use with your children or you, you'd give as advice to parents that they could incorporate play but in kind of not sat down playing as such I know you mentioned with the zip yes I, I think just going about your daily routine you can add in playful moments all the time just I call it like little sparks it's almost just little bits and pieces and I have to say you know the mum guilt I get it I sat with my so I've got a one-year-old a three-year-old and a nine-year-old so life's quite busy um and I sat with my one-year-old the other day and he's he loves row 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 your boat and we sat and we sang that and he was like he'll actually move your hands to make you do it and I was like, oh, gosh, I've not sat and done this with him for ages. And then, of course, it's that flood of mum guilt, isn't it? It's like, oh, my goodness, I'd have done it with my first two. And I've not, you know, when was the last time I sat down face to face singing with him? I can't even remember. But it's just remembering, like I said, there's those everyday moments as well that are going on where they are, they're watching and they're learning from you all the time. So I think it's just about you don't have to be sat, sat down I'm thinking right we're going to do an activity it doesn't need to look like something off pinterest you know okay there are some gorgeous Im images out there but let's be honest we don't have the playrooms they have in america we don't have the the wooden toys or the themed playroom or the labeled boxes my goodness come and see my lounge it's it's chaos and it's everyday lovely chaos but it's just remembering that you're doing amazing things probably more often than not without even realizing like I said you know if you've come in from work and just talking about your day you know they're hearing you they're learning from you all the time they're learning what it takes to hold down a job I used to have this as well I um when Mason my first was little I'd be traipsing in up and down to I sell activity cars I'd be taking them to the printers to the post office Again, the mum guilt of like, oh my goodness, you know, all he ever sees is running errands for the business. But actually, I was I was his role model. I was teaching him, this is what it takes to run a business. This is what it takes to look after a house. Um, and letting them see you do those things is really important too. So I think it's about, it's the it's the love and affection, you know, the, the kisses, the cuddles, um, the silly times at bath time, all those sorts of things. Um, the chatter, talking to your baby, talking to your child is the most powerful thing that you can do. So if you go to bed and you're giving yourself a hard time, you know, we do it, don't we, as mums? I could write a list of 10 things that went wrong today or 10 things that I didn't do. You know, I forgot the water bottle for nursery. I forgot to do, and you're giving yourself a hard time. Get into bed and just think, you know, we, we like I said, we chatted when we were sat at the bus stop or we we chatted over dinner or I only got in just in time for bath time tonight. Well, I'm sure you, you, you know, those, those moments in the day are just as powerful, if not more powerful, where you get connection with your baby rather than sitting down and doing those beautiful images you see online that just aren't realistic. And let me assure you more often than not, they've probably not even been played with. Those activities you see that are laid out and they all look just so gorgeous. I bet a child doesn't even play with them anyway. So just try not to compare yourself to social media. So I think it's so true what you talk about is this Instagram world that you see, um, that you see and you're, you're constantly comparing yourself and things like that. So have you found that the mums that you're, you're interacting with, and I know mums at home listening, will find there's this pressure to constantly have this perfect life and to enjoy motherhood and things like that. Are you finding that that's, what people are the, the general consensus yeah it's really common and you know I'm guilty of this too and I I, I I get it and I have noticed myself I can have a quick you know you have a quick scroll the kids have got Peppa Pig on and you think right I'll have a quick little scroll and you come away and I've noticed it it can yes Instagram or social media rather can be a great place to connect 
to to learn things, to be entertained, all those sorts of things. But at the same time, I've noticed myself, I've been on, I've had a scroll and I've come away thinking, I don't cook meals like that for my children. I don't, you know, I don't leave the house looking like I stepped out of a magazine every day with my kids. I don't do this. I don't do that. And within a few minutes, it's all the things that you're not doing. And again, I just think it's that, it's just another load of negative talk. I was saying about getting into bed and the guilt trip we give ourselves, it's sort of adding to that pressure, isn't it? So something I would really recommend is just really monitoring who it is that you're following um you know one of my favorite favorite accounts um she's she's huge she's blown up and it's this lady and she shares her her home and i'm really into i love interior design and i follow her and it's great but and i love seeing what she's doing however i noticed one day that i was finding it quite triggering because i was just like god her house is always so tidy and it always looks amazing and the way she styles it and you know i'm not doing that you know my house is there's there's a Lego brick on the floor over there. I can see it. And I don't know, <laughs> you know, they're everywhere. And it's it was that. And then I was like, hang on a second. She's she's in a different stage of life to me. Her children are grown. Some have left house. Some of them are teenagers. She's grown up. She runs an account online about interior design. So of course she's going to make sure her house looks nice. It's about sort of recognizing she was in a very different chapter in her life to me. So yes, I was using it to inspire me for interior design but actually on a regular basis it was like oh oh and it just it was just that little drip feeling of I was it was the way I was interpreting it wasn't her fault I was interpreting negatively it was having an effect on me so I adore her but I unfollowed because I noticed that that was happening when we renovate our kitchen I know exactly where she is to go and find her for inspiration and follow her you know and I can use it then so I try and remind um the mums that I work with to almost use social media like you would a magazine or curate your feed so that it's the kind of things you're interested in. I love home design. I am looking for recipes. I've got a really fussy eater, so I'm always looking for easy, quick. I've just bought an air fryer. I'm useless. I don't know how to use it. So I'm following accounts that are sharing how to use the air fryer. It's that sort of what do I need in my life right now? And you know, use social media in that way and get from social media what you want, like you would buy a magazine think about the things that interest you and that are helpful to you and if at any point you're finding you are following people you may adore their account but if like me you're finding like do you know what? i'm getting to bed and i'm just giving myself such a hard time that i'm not at this level um i think maybe unfollow them for a bit or maybe have a little break you know i learned recently that you can actually so i'm big on it i love using instagram you can actually delete instagram from your home feed so it's uh so from your home screen so it's there if you want it if you need it um but because the buttons removed from being immediately there you know there's times i found myself on instagram and i don't even know how it's happened you know i've gone to look for something else and i'm like hang on a second i'm on instagram like this is ridiculous so i find by removing it particularly in school holidays like now when it does feel a bit like survival mode just trying to be very mindful of how much time i use on social media and um i encourage the mums in my community to take a break from social media you know like whether it's a weekend, whether it's school holidays, take a break, just be, or, you know, maybe a Sunday is a good time to have a bit of a sort out and follow anything that you find is not helpful. So anything like that, really, just, it can be a great place on social media, but just be really mindful of how it's making you feel, because at the end of the day, it's just not worth it if it's making you feel bad about yourself. Yeah, and that makes complete sense. And I like like the analogy of the, um the magazine so use it in that way because it is so easy isn't it to fall into the trap of comparison and then obviously that would make you feel bad and things like that so is this this kind of mindset so this shift into kind of support and coaching for mums has that come about because of this the way it was making you feel or, or what made that come about um, I've always been, I've always tried to be very honest on um, social media. So I've always admitted, you know, I'm not, I'm in early years, I'm running play hooray, but I don't play every day or my playroom doesn't. So I've always tried to be very open and honest um, because I'm conscious of making, I don't want mums to feel bad. You know, I don't want to contribute to that guilt trip that mums are giving themselves. However, I, like I said, I had my third baby Rafi 
Oh, he's about 18 months now. You can tell he's the third baby. You know, I used to know the age of, no, he's third one. I'm like, he's 18 months or something. <laughs> third baby, bless him. Um, so he's about 18 months old now. And I just noticed once again, after I'd had him, that I was just left feeling completely lost again. And I wasn't playing in the same way. I had a newborn, I had a toddler and a nine, eight, nine year old. Um, I wasn't playing in the same way. So um, I felt a bit disingenuine, not that I've ever preached about play, but I was very conscious that I wasn't playing, but I was talking about play all the time. But I'd also noticed that more often than not, the messages that I receive on a daily basis, and that's where I love spending my time. I'm always in my inbox, chatting with mums and just offering support where I can. More often than not, they would be reaching out to me for perhaps suggestions or help or advice and actually they knew the answer the mums always know the answer because and I always say you know no one knows your baby like you do um and it was just sometimes they just wanted that reassuring nod or agreement from someone else uh, that they were doing the right thing which we all do don't we I've done it many a times I've rung the health visitor about something and like uh, afterwards I'm always like I knew the answer I knew that already but you just you just want someone to reassure you're doing the right thing. And I've noticed that a lot of the conversations I was having, it, it might be like, you know, my mother-in-law says that my child should be counting by now. My mother-in-law or uh, my friends, I've noticed my friend's child is sorting toys by color. And mine's, it's that comparison and, and the influx of um, advice you can get as well from well-meaning family and friends, but it can be quite hard for mums. Um, when you've got, so, you know, you're on such a big learning curve, but you're given so much advice and you're looking at other children and things and it'd be like, well, well, what do you think? And more often than not, they knew, they knew the answer. And so I just felt like I didn't, I love play. I adore play, but I don't want to just support with play. I wanted to support with play and a bit more really, and just helping mums to feel good about themselves and finding their, and almost, um, so I've really talk about it being a new chapter, whatever, it, whether it's um, feeling lost and finding yourself again, whether it's, um, I support mums uh, starting up businesses like I do online. It's just that sort of, okay, I've become a mum. Actually, um, there's loads of positives with this. There's loads, there's loads of great things that are happening. But at that time, you are you can be so hard on yourself and giving yourself a hard time. I almost want to be that like reassuring virtual hug, really, to lots of mums that need it because I needed it. I was going through it myself um, and hadn't really heard many people talk about that lost identity. So I think a lot of my followers saw me go on that personal journey as well. Um, so, yeah, it has been a bit of a, a shift for me and I'm still finding my feet. But I just I really I've always I think when you work in early years as well, you support not just the child, but the families, don't you? And I've, I've always really enjoyed that. So it's about, now it's about supporting with play and motherhood, let's say. And I think the two really go hand in hand because I think you need to be the best version of yourself to be able to, you know, give everything to your child, if that makes sense. So you almost need to, it's so important to, to you know give yourself time and look after your own mental health and um, to be the best mum that you can be so I think there is a very nice link there um if you know what I mean I think I think it's really important to give yourself time as well um so we've just been talking about the hooray the new chapter and, and building that community of people and I guess it's it's again providing that for for mums so, you, so you're almost letting them know that everybody's a bit normal and everyone's kind of just winging it and struggling in that that sense and just getting by yeah absolutely you know we're all we're all doing our best we're all making it up as we go along we're all giving ourselves a hard time for the kids being on too many screens you know we're all we're all in it together basically and that's really what I'm trying to offer mums is just um I've had the most incredible women on to share their stories of how whether they've just started a new chapter for themselves. I had a lady on yesterday about retrained as a personal stylist and just how that's helped women as well. You know, not just um, finding clothes that fit nice, but we all know the difference it makes when you wear it. And this is why I've got lipstick on. I wore it yesterday to interview her. And I was like, wow, that gave me such a boost because I'm, I'm always in dark colors. And it's the power of feeling good about yourself, isn't it? And when you do feel good in, 
in a variety of different areas of your life, you know, you're perhaps you're more likely to take the kids out or go and try that new play cafe or go and and I just think particularly for mums, there's just so many elements to it, isn't it, of being a parent. Um, so I've really tried to in introduce a variety of different guests. I've had the organised mum, which I imagine lots of people know, who's great at supporting mums with cleaning and keeping on top of the house, because again, that's another mental workload for us mums, isn't it? But even she says there's more to life than housework. And it's like, okay, there's permission. Yeah, that's it, you know, there's permission. <laughs> I'm not the biggest well I'm not the biggest fan of cleaning and even she can motivate me to want to get on and get but it's just that you know there's the permission the the plates are always going to be in the sink um you know if you want to go take the kids to the park that's fine it's and it's just that again it's that permission and just hearing again from another mum who's building a business online so we've had so many really interesting guests um someone who created sensory books and, and products for young children so it's just lovely to hear other people's stories because yeah to be honest I, I love reality tv I love hearing other people's stories and and I think it just really shares and whether you're wanting to start a business whether you're wanting to start a new chapter or it's you just find it interesting I'm here from lots of mums so just like it's just really interesting to hear a variety of, of different people's stories um so yeah I'm I'm really enjoying it and I I love talking to people as well this is something when I realized I was feeling like I'd lost myself after Rafi I'd also had my second child in lockdown. And I do wonder whether that's maybe been a bit of it. I spend a lot of time at home on my own with young children or working from home. And I think I got out the habit of leaving the house or spending time. And I was like, do you know what? And I wanted to, when I had Rafi and I thought, right, I want to pivot slightly to support mums in a different way, but also what, what do I need? And I was like, I need that human connection. I love talking to people. The days of being a teacher, I'd work in a big team of, of incredible women and we'd meet, men and women, sorry, and we'd meet regularly and bounce ideas off each other. And I was like, do you know what? I think I'm really missing that. I think I'm craving that. So it was a bit of an opportunity for me just to really reflect on also what I wanted out of work, what I wanted out of my life um, and sort of tweak it. So, I, yeah, I realised that actually I love collaborating. I love conversations like this, getting to meet people like you, Lucy. And um, so it was it was a good excuse to invite them on and onto my channel on Instagram and just have a little chat and connect um, and get to hear their stories. Brilliant. And what's the response been um, from your mums that follow you? I, I guess you're, you're getting quite a lot of positive interaction. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did underestimate it, actually, to be honest. I underestimated it, it all. Um, I think I just I did. I'm one of these people who. I have an idea and I go for it. <laughs> it's, it's, there are pros and cons to that. Um, but yeah, and I think I, I still get lots of messages from mum saying, you know, I really miss the play content. Uh, and I, I can understand that. And that, that's fine. But um, like I said, I have a different relationship to it. I used to go live every single weekday when Mason was tiny, my eldest, and we go live and we share activities and things he was three he was my only child I was at home with him full time I'm in a very different place I was comparing myself to then and I'm in a very different place now I've got three young children and it's it's just not and I just felt like the business had grown the business had moved on as well and so had I so I love doing the play things and we still have our play account and would I'm sharing play on there regularly but also I was craving perhaps something new I was craving helping people uh, uh, in a different way you know I'd been talking about play for eight years now I was ready for a bit of a change and just I do like I am a person that does like change I find it quite refreshing and quite motivating and exciting so I've really enjoyed it and it's just I just feel so fortunate that my audience have allowed me to pivot and sort of stuck with me and then the messages I get from from women that are just really benefiting from it, even just because I've been on my own personal journey after having my third you know I, it's taken me nine years to appreciate that it's okay for mums to practice self-care, which I know is ridiculous. You know, we hear the gurus say it all the time. And I always say, poor Joe Wicks, the body coach, he's been telling us for years, you know, even when you're exhausted, just do a bit of movement, it makes you feel good. And I used to roll my eyes and you think, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, I'm exhausted. That's that's the last thing I want to do. And I, you know, we love his energy, but I used to think, okay, sure. Um, and I'm not a naturally sporty person, 
But then again, when I'd had Rafi and I wanted to bring, I wanted to become the kind of person that looked after herself, basically. I'd been putting myself, I'd been a mum for nine years, put myself at the bottom of the pile. And I just wanted to be like, right, no, this is silly now. I was just, it's, I was feeling so stuck is the best way to describe it. And so I wanted to practice that sort of self-love and that's not spa days. It's not going to get your hair done. It's actually speaking nicely to yourself, not giving yourself a hard time when you forget it's non-uniform day. It's um, fine, you know, it's okay to say, do you know what, I need a break or I really need some alone time. I'm spending a lot of time with the children. You know, I need to go out for a walk on my own or all those little things which are our basic human needs. But as mums, we almost feel like, who are we to do that? And I used to almost wear a, my burnout as a badge of honour. It used to be like, you know, I'm such a dedicated mum. I'm absolutely exhausted. And it's like, that's that's not a good thing. And it's like I said, it's, it's taken me nine years to discover this for myself no matter if it's, it's always the way, isn't it? People can tell you, but until you get to that point of like, right, something's got to change because I can't keep going on like this. Um, and I just started practicing those little things of um, daily affirmations, speaking nightly. You know, if someone said to me, Claire, you'd be the type to journal and practice daily affirmations. I used to be like, yeah, whatever. Actually, I now see the difference it makes on the way that I feel the way I feel as a mum, the way I feel as a parent, and it's helped me to become a better version of myself. It's still a journey, but I definitely think I'm getting there and it's been really helping. So it's nice it's helping others too. Absolutely. So is that the type of content you're sharing on this page, kind of daily affirmations, top tips, motivation for mums? Is that what you can expect to see when somebody would go on your your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's um it's pretty much what's going on in my life, to be honest. I'm very hard on my sleeve. I share, um, I, I hope to share the realistic um, side of motherhood and what I'm going through. And there, there's sometimes moments of me tearful and more often than not, I've got no makeup on or I'm up early with the kids and I try and be really honest. But then I also share what I've been doing. So like I said, a few months after, about a year ago, actually, Raffin, my youngest, was really tiny. And I just noticed that I was really craving feeling strong again and that's both physically and mentally you know physically I'd had three big babies I was so wobbly nothing was in the right place you know you look in the mirror you just don't recognize yourself and I just felt like I had just no core strength and I noticed that I was again following women on Instagram who weren't necessarily doing diets or weight loss or anything they were in the gym working out they were getting strong they were lifting weights and I was just like oh my God, I, re like, I just really wanted to do that. I just wanted to physically feel stronger because I know that when you feel strong and you hold yourself different, you feel more confident, you wear your clothes differently. And it was all of that really combined with also feeling stuck. I was, I, I realized I was completely burnt out and I was putting myself at the bottom of the pile. So I personally went on this journey, what I call stuck to strong is that I was just in, yeah, just, I got to the point and I remember it so clearly it was early one morning in the kitchen. I had all three kids in that. I was dressing gown, hair on top of my head, yesterday's makeup on, baby on my hair, making pat lunches. And this song came on. I don't know if you know, Lucy, you look a lot younger than me. Um, this song came on called Pretty Green Eyes. I don't know if you remember it. <laughs> well, it came on and it must have been on some like Alexa thing. And it came on and I sort of, it stopped me dead in my tracks because I was like, the last time I listened, I heard this song, I think I was probably stood in a bath. I was like a 19, 20 year old woman. All the parts were in the right place. You know, boobs were still in the right place. And it was just like, how have I got here? I just don't recognize myself. Like, who am I? I adore being a mom. I adore my children. It's not that. It's just like, who am I? I can't even remember who I am anymore. And it, it just felt worlds apart. And that was the point where I was like, I always remember there was a quote and it says, nothing changes if nothing changes. And it just, it literally just was like, yeah, if I don't do something about this, I'm just going to carry on and just keep feeling stuck and flip, and it's just time to do something. So I went on my own personal journey. So I've been sharing that really on Instagram of what I'm doing to try and look after myself. And like I said, just learning that actually looking after yourself as a mum 
doesn't need the guilt trip. It's okay. And self-care is actually self-preservation. You're looking after yourself. And it does make you a better person, but it also makes you a better mum as well. Having those breaks and, and looking after yourself and having that hot shower or leaving the house and making plans with friends. It's You're okay. You're, you're allowed to do it. It's permission as such to do those sorts of things. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you've mentioned all this because I know so many of our mums will be at home kind of nodding away thinking, actually, you know what, I, I, I'm the same as Clara. I, I feel that way and it's and it's OK. So what would your advice be to say one of our listeners who's just had a baby, she's in the depths of, you know, sleepless nights and not looking after herself and things like that. What would your advice be? Obviously, you, you've come on such a journey, but to, taking those first steps, I can imagine, can be quite difficult. Yeah. It's, it's really hard and first of all I hope you're okay because I think that's a really it's a really hard stage to be in isn't it and for mums one of the most important things is that we are supported so anyone at home listening whether you have a newborn whether you have um whether you're unwell or the children are and you're just in that bubble of survival mode where you're just simply getting through the day I hope you're okay and I hope you have support because that makes the biggest difference to mum's well-being. It's the biggest indicator that a mum is coping and that her mental health is okay. So I really hope you have support and if not, to reach out because there are incredible charities out there now supporting mums. Um, But for me personally, it was that decision of like, right, who do I want to be? You know, yes, I am a mum, but also... I have a personality, I'm a person within myself and sort of deciding and I realised that I was craving becoming that person who it was part of her daily routine that looked after herself physically and mentally. So that was having a decent breakfast, going to the toilet when she needs to toilet, you know, not holding a wee all day. These are our basic needs that we do on a regular basis. Um, just those, you know, move, moving my body to help me feel good, not for weight loss, but for feeling good speaking nicely to myself so I found that for me I almost got this like mental picture in my head of right that's the person I want to be and then what am I going to do to to become that sort of person and that for me has become a a big game changer and lots of women that I work with will put together some sort of like vision board Um, I don't know if you've heard of vision boards where you find images they may be photos of you where you were feeling good or feeling confident or they might be images online and you can bring them together and it just really can help you create a mental image of the person that you want to be and then you'll find that you'll start just making changes it's it really does it sounds so cheesy when I say it and I know a few years ago I had a listen and I thought yeah sure but it really just start in that mindset of that you you are worthy you are um you're worthy of love you're worthy of those self those basic needs being met um and that you can actually do some you know we can't change everything but those things that you can change um what can you do to start just looking after yourself better and like I said it's not the spa days it's not the holidays it's not the hair treatments it's just um those just making sure that you've got your basic human needs met and then just start to think about who who do you want to become who do you want to and whether that is I had a lady the other day who wanted to write children's books I was like, amazing, yes. And and she was giving herself such a hard time that she wanted to dedicate her evenings or nap times to writing and, and getting her ideas down on paper instead of getting on top of the housework or, you know, all the other things that we have to do in nap time. And I was like, no, because if that energizes you and motivates you and you're coming up with ideas, you know, it's you're allowed that identity outside of being a mum. So, um, yeah, definitely start with that mindset and really thinking about who who you want to, who you want to become and you'll start make taking tiny steps tiny tiny steps and that's okay but you'll start you will start to feel like yourself again and if sorry <laughs> talking a lot I was just going to add Lucy that I think as well we always talk about like particularly if you're missing your old self and feel like she's gone you know quite often you hear like oh you're old she's gone now this is the new you I always feel like I don't actually agree with that I always feel like no, she's still within you. That old you, she's still in there. She just needs some love and affection, you know, speak nicely to her, um, look after her, and she will emerge and you will start to feel like you again. I promise you will. But it's going to be like a new, improved, slightly different you. Yeah, it's almost like, it sounds cheap, the butterfly coming out. It's that sort of, um, it is the old you in there, but 
you're slightly different you've tweaked slightly but you're newly improved and um and you're gonna be all right because you're doing a good job that's brilliant advice and i absolutely love the speak kindly to yourself that type of thing i i, I once heard somebody say kind of look in the mirror and actually talk nicely to yourself or if you have a child imagine them talking bad about themselves how you'd feel um so yeah I think that's really important and do you have any advice for mums perhaps a little bit further down the line that are kind of maybe coming to the end of maternity leave and dreading going back or or you know um children are perhaps going to school and then again there's another change and another it's a big thing isn't it you've been a mum for so many years and now kind of the children don't need you as much have you got any advice for those type of mums yeah so that's that actually um I presumed I would be working more with mums who had just had babies actually I spend more of my time working with mums who like you said they've they've big change particularly children starting school and that scares me my little girl's three and a half so she'll be school in six months I just think oh my goodness I only know how to be a mum now this is going to be another change yeah yeah and that's it and so often um a lot a lot of our mums are left thinking like well well what now you know I've been I've been a mum what what now and I just think try to I know change can be very daunting for a lot of people like I said I love it I'm I'm the person who's always like rearranging the furniture in the lounge for no reason I just like a change I'm I'm one of those people I get bored too easily um but not everybody does and it can be quite daunting particularly when you feel like you're stepping into something new then you don't know what to expect but I do wonder whether is rather than see it as a daunting experience what about seeing it as reframing it as an opportunity for you to really think about your needs you know I imagine being a mum you've put a lot of your your goals your hopes your dreams I imagine a lot of being things have been put on on pause um they're, they're probably still in there you're probably still thinking about it and this goes back to the the lady that wanted to write these children's about she's you know she was saying I've been thinking about this for years but now my children go back to school um and it's that you know is could this be an opportunity for you to try that other thing that you wanted to do whether it's an old hobby that you did I used to adore drawing and painting and I keep thinking right I'll I'll maybe book a night class or I'll, I'm, I'm gonna do something because it would get me out of the house it would get me meeting people and it's something that I used to absolutely love doing and I think it's that is this an opportunity where you can if you're unhappy in your job where you could maybe pivot slightly or do something different or try your hand um at gardening or cooking or whatever it is that you've got that sort of yearning for um perhaps if not see it as an opportunity for that um to try something but yeah it's it's a it's a really hard time isn't it and i, I completely appreciate it but don't i think <laughs> i'm sick you saying it but just keep talking keep talking to your friends to your family it doesn't necessarily have to be like I've got a business idea. What do you think? Because obviously you want to share things like that who are going to give you the push and boost you and, and, and cheer you on. But just sharing that you're you're coming to this time, this change, and you're feeling like you're in limbo or you're feeling like you're stuck or you're not sure what to do next. Keep talking because, like I said, that support, the support for mums, just, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a baby. It takes a village to support a mum. It really does. And just keep talking I hope you have taught and something I've again um learned is I I hear from so many mums who are incredibly lonely and don't have friends and suddenly when the children go to school it's like right what now is that you can actually find a community you know there's amazing communities online um if if you're feeling like you haven't got people that you can meet up with in real life or baby groups or just it is gonna perhaps be stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit um but it's just gonna really support you because it makes the biggest difference um of just trying to find support and make sure that you have someone to talk through because these are big things, you know, don't be embarrassed about it because the amount of messages I get like, oh, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed to say this, but, and it's like, no, gosh, you're definitely they're not the only one. You're not alone with this. So many of us have these feelings as well. And that's a really true point, isn't it? So many mums have been through their children going back to school or going back after maternity leave. Like there's, there's so many people out there who've been through it. So if you reach out, more often than not, people are going to agree and going to be like, you know what, I've been there and, and that's fine too. 
Yeah, yeah. I always say everyone's got their own milestones. I call them mum milestones. I remember when I just had my third baby and I remember thinking, how am I actually going to do the school run? It was such a mammoth thing to me. How am I? Yeah, just logistics. How am I actually going to get us all the house for super early in the morning? Everybody like how? And I remember the night before going through it in my head. I was so nervous about it, making the packed lunches the night before. You know, now I do it without even thinking about it. And it's just that. But at the time, it was a big deal for me. And I'm sure if I, you know, I'm sure if I spoke to another mum with three children, it'd be like, oh, you'll be fine. You're okay. You'll get there because they've been there. They've got that experience. But we all have those moments. And I always say, take a selfie. You don't have to share it with anyone. But it's just that acknowledgement of, you know, do you know what? I took all three kids on the school run this morning. Like, well done me. We need to celebrate that. Or I always say, you know, <laughs> when you take children swimming, and the dreaded sweat, you know, changing rooms, and it's hot, and everyone's sticking, it's disgusting. And you come out, I always think they should play a round of applause. Like when you open the door, they should, you should be like, the street should be lined, and you should get a round of applause because it's an achievement in itself coming out of swimming. Is that you sometimes you think, like, I need someone to acknowledge just, you know, that was hard work, and I did. And I think it's as mums, we go through so many of those moments that might not appear to it but for us it's a it's a big mountain to climb it's a big achievement and um it needs to be celebrated so take that selfie keep it to yourself because you'll be able to look back on it and you'll be like oh my goodness that's the day i took all the kids to school and now look at me like it's it's just it's yeah it's just celebrating those moments because it, it is really hard and it is really tricky um but yeah we need celebrating definitely Absolutely. And I always think after having children and when they've gone to school or whatever, anything you turn your hand to then is going to be simple because you have learned so many skills along the way. Uh, so you're kind of a better version of yourself. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I say this all the time too. I talk to a lot of mum because I've grown a business online on social media. I have a, um, lots of mums who follow me and say, you know, I'd love to do something like that. And I'm like, well, why not? You look at the skills that you've developed from being a mum, you know, all those, the multitasking, the, you know, there's so many skills that you can do that works really well with business that applies really well to running your own business. Uh, you've more than proved it as being a mum. So if you're even thinking about it, do it, go for it. You've, you've got to give it a try. So yeah, definitely. Motherhood is a lot like running a business. <laughs> yeah. So what would your top three tips be to a mom that actually doesn't want to go back to work, wants to start that business of writing books or doing whatever it is? What What would your top three tips be to get started? Okay, so I think, and it was um, Stephen Barkler, um, the Diary of a CEO guy, he did a post the other day and it was so true. And he was saying he has hundreds of business ideas, which I imagine, you, you can imagine he does. And he says, he, all he'll do is he'll open the Instagram page, he'll open an Instagram page with that name. And he's like, it's such a small thing you can do, but it's a massive step because it's like, it's making the business real. It's making that first step. And more often than not, it's that first step. It sounds like such a big deal starting a business. You know, back in the day, that meant that you would be writing a business plan. You'd be going to the bank for a business loan and opening a business account, da, 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 all these amazing things. There are so many, and a lot of women, because it works around our children and family life, there are so many of us working online now uh, to be able to provide an income around family, doing it online, because I literally run my life from my phone, my business, um, and it just it, it just makes such a difference. So just opening that Instagram account or buying that gorgeous new shiny stick, you know, that gorgeous new stationery that's going to help you write your book, or even if it's not a business, you just wanting to start a hobby of looking in your area if there are any night classes for painting. It's just about taking those little steps because those little steps makes such a big difference it's taking the step that like builds the staircase as such because so often we have these things that our goal at the top of the staircase and you just think well i just don't know how i'm gonna get there i don't know how, i don't even know how to do it and i liken it the same i i had this idea a few years ago that about writing a book um you know shall i do a writing a book with my activities in and i for a long time was like oh i can't write a book you know i'm not the, i'm not the type of person to sit and type for very long that I can talk I can't sit and type for very long and, and um I was like no 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 I taught myself out of it for ages and then I was like do you know what actually I think I will I think I regret it if I don't do it so I just then had a notebook and just started jotting down ideas of 
what would the chapters be? What would be in it? What would it look like? And I thought, you know, because it's play, I want it to be a bit like a recipe book. So parents can flick through and find what they need and what they can set up. And so it's sort of built like that. And so I just jot down ideas and then I thought, well, I don't know if I could do writing. So I was like, okay, I'll have a go at just doing a little bit of writing and made a free ebook for my followers um, to see if I could sit and write for a long period of time and put my ideas down on paper and what the response. And it was just by taking those small amounts of those small pieces of action, it then built up my confidence. And then on the first day of lockdown, when Boris Johnson announced it, I actually got, um, because of working on Instagram and, and lots of parents were working, uh, looking for ideas with play, I actually got a phone call that I'd had three book offers on the same day, which is just ridiculous. Um, but then I had the confidence that, oh, actually, I could have written a book because if that had come in a year before, I'd have probably turned it down because I just didn't think I was ever the person to be able to do that. So I think with anything, don't wait until you're going to feel confident. I think so often we think, oh, I'll do that when I'm in a bit, you know, when I've lost the weight or when I've got loads of time. Don't don't wait because that confidence is actually going to come once you start doing the doing. And it's only because I started putting ideas down on paper and that sort of thing that then when the opportunity did arrive, I had the confidence. I was like, oh, actually, maybe I could do this. And let's get let's give it a go. So um, I'm really sorry, Lucy. I <laughs> what did I say about opening the Instagram page? Um, don't wait till you feel confident. And I think. Try not to worry about what other people think. Us as mums, that's all we do, isn't it? It's about what other people think about our children's behaviour, about the way that they were dressed, and all these different things. And I think once you realise that everyone is so busy in their own lives, back in the day, I would only do the school run with like full makeup, dress nicely, blah, blah, blah. I mean, how ridiculous. Now, I'll cut more often than not because once I do the school drop off, I do my exercises. I've normally got no makeup. I've normally got my gym stuff on, my hair on top of my head. I actually realise that no one's probably even noticed because everyone's get in, get out. Everyone's so busy with their own lives. And you're, the people that truly matter to you will be cheering you on. So if you want to start that gardening blog if you want to write that children's book and give it a go don't let the opinions of others stop you please don't because at the end of the day what what, what do they matter it's 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 really i know it's easier said than done isn't it but the thought of a few years down the line and you not trying something because you were worried what other people would think it's just it's just heartbreaking basically so yeah i yeah, I think they would probably be my, my top tips. <laughs> They're amazing tips. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Claire, for coming on to the podcast today. You've, you've given us so many lovely ideas for, for mums with children, but then also for mums to support themselves. So I've really enjoyed our chat. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode and a huge thank you to Claire for coming along and sitting down with us and talking all things motherhood. I hope you're feeling as empowered as I am. Make sure you give Claire a follow. I'll pop her Instagram details below and please remember to like, comment and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening. Hope to see you again very soon for another episode of the Early Years Development Show. Bye.